good morning. We thank you for joining the Come As You Are ministry once again for another great and glorious, beautiful Sunday morning. We're sorry we're a little late to start it. Uh, laptop didn't want to work right this morning, so we had to make some changes. But we thank God that we always have a backup plan in order to make sure that his word goes forth. Amen. Uh, today, we also went ahead. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also want to take this time out to tell uh, the First Lady of the Come As You Are Ministries Happy Anniversary. Today is our fifth year anniversary together, and we thank and praise God for it. Amen. And as we always say, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God is good all the time, and all the time, God is truly good. We thank you for your continued love and support and prayers of this ministry. And we want you to know that this ministry loves you. We are praying for you and we are supporting you as well with our prayers that God will make a way out of no way in your life. Let's get right into what God has for us this morning. We're looking at Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. And it reads, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and praise you once again for another great and glorious opportunity to come before your good people. And as always, oh God, we ask your honor to have your heart today, known and given to you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praise out of everything that is said and done here. Lord, this morning we don't stay up just here because your word says greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. And if God be for us, who's more than the whole world that's in us? So, Father, we just ask you to touch right now. We ask you to come on in, Lord God, grab us by the reins of my mind, and speak to us and through us, Lord God, and do what truly is your word to us. Father, bless us this day. We love you. We honor you, and we adore you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. We were looking at a subject. Are you holier than thou, or are you holy for God? Are you holier than thou? Are you holy for God? You say, well, Reverend, where did you come up with that particular topic? Well, ride with me a little while and I'll show you. I've learned in this life a lot of us act like we've never done anything wrong. We act like we're so perfect. We've been saved all of our lives. We've always known the Lord. We've always walked with the Lord. We've always talked with the Lord. We've never made mistakes. We've never been to places we shouldn't have gone. We've never said things we shouldn't have said. We've never offended anybody. We act like we've just never done anything wrong. We act so perfect at times. But I've learned through the word of God that we all have sin. We wonder why sometimes our churches don't grow like we want them to grow. We wonder why people won't stay at church. The reasoning people won't stay at church and our churches won't grow and prosper like we want them to or like God would have them to grow is because of the simple fact some of us are not as saved as we claim to be. A lot of us always talk about we got the Holy Ghost, but you need to take a step back and wonder, does the Holy Ghost have you? The thing is, we act like we're so holier than thou that we're perfect. We've never done anything. But you got to understand something. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 lets us know that we're just sinners saved by grace. In other words, it's by grace that we're still here. It's by grace that you're saved. You can still be out there in the world doing those same old things that you used to do, hanging around those same old folks that you used to hang around. But some way, somehow, God delivered you, God saved you, God brought you into the fold, and not only did he bring you into the fold, but he elevated you, possibly caused you to preach, caused you to teach, caused you to be a witness for him. So we must all understand that none of us are perfect. None of us are on the top. None of us, we're all striving to get to perfection. We're all striving to get closer and closer to God. We wonder why when people come in, no, they may not be dressed like we want them to dress. They may not look like we think they ought to look. They might not even smell like we think they should smell. But at the end of the day, the church is a hospital. The church is the place where you come to get help. The church is the place the way you come to get healing. The church is the place the way you come to get to know the Lord more. Not to be torn down. Not to be put down. Not to be talked about. 
not to be pushed to the side. But this is where I come to get help. He said, well, Reverend, I still don't understand what you're talking about. I still don't understand where you're coming from. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, tells a story about two men in the synagogue. And it reads, and spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican was standing afar off. But this Pharisee was standing there praying selflessly. Telling God, this is what I've done. I've done this. I've done that. You know, I, I'm glad I'm not like everybody else. I haven't made those mistakes. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. True. You might not have made the same mistakes I've made, but you have made some mistakes. Why? Because no sin is bigger than the other sin. We all have messed up. The Bible says we were all born into sin, shaken into iniquity. So in other words, what that means, I was born in a mess. But at the end of the day, when I came to know Jesus, the Bible said, any man that, that's in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And behold, all have become new. In other words, there was a change that took place. So when that change took place, I'm no longer the same. I'm no longer the same person. I don't want to do the things I used to do. I don't desire to hang around the folk I used to hang around with. I don't desire to go to the same places. I used to go. Why? Because there was a change. When the change comes in, that's when things get better. But we must understand, and put a pen right here, we must understand that there's a difference between Christians and church folk. There's a difference. Christians will love on you. Christians will embrace you. Christians will teach you. They will help you go in the direction that God wants you to go in. Christians will sit down and pray with you. They won't talk about you because you got problems. They won't talk about you because you got a pain. Maybe all of us got a pain. All of us done done some stuff. All of us done done some things that we really should have been locked up for. We really should have got in some big trouble for. But some way, somehow, God delivered you from it. God brought you out of it. God made a way out of no way just for you. And you can look back and you can say, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like that anymore. I'm not the way I used to be anymore. You changed me. You did a wonderful change in my life. There's a difference between Christians and church folk. Church folk are the holier than thou. They're the ones that want to make you think that you know what? God can't use you. They're the ones that want to make you think that there's nothing that God can do with you. You got to do this and you got to do that in order to be like them. Well, if I got to be like you, I don't want to do it. I want to be saved. I want to be a Christian. I want to be like Jesus. I don't know about nobody else, but I want to be like Jesus. I don't want to be like church folk. I want to be like Jesus, the one that saved me, the one that healed me, the one that delivered me, the one that loved me in spite of who I am. The problem is we love folks because of, not in spite of. In other words, we have to learn to love people in spite of their mistakes, in spite of some of the things that they do, and keep praying for them. Don't put them down, don't talk about them, don't discourage them, but uplift them through the word of God. Teach them through the word of God that they can be better people. They don't have to be the same way that they are. Teach them that God is a deliverer. Teach them that God is a burden bearer. Teach them that God is a heavy load sharer. Don't hold their past over their head. Don't hold the past mistakes that they made, the places that they may have gone, the things that they may have done. Don't hold it over their head. Let them know that we serve a God that's got all power in his hand. Let them know that we serve a God that will change, a God that will fix it, a God that will make a way out of no way. Glory to God. I look at this Pharisee, and he stood there. Don't get me wrong. The stuff that he said he did was good. What that wrong with the thing that he had done? He fasted twice a week and he gave tithe of all of his possessions. All of that was good, but don't allow your good to be evil spoken of. In other words, we don't need to boast about nothing. We don't need to brag about nothing. 
Because, baby, all of the stuff that you have, God give it and God take it away. If you don't believe it, talk to old man Job. God give it and God take it away. Job was a rich man. Job had all kinds of wealth. But when Job started going through, God started stripping him of some things. And sometimes God got to move some stuff out of the way to put some good stuff where it needs to be. So sometimes he's going to do some furniture moving. He's going to move some stuff around in order to bring better blessings your way, in order to bring stuff in your life that needs to be there. There's going to be some time God going to move some folk out of the way that don't need to be in your life in order to bring some better people in. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go in that direction, but I'm just talking about what I'm talking about, saying what I'm saying. In order for life to get better, you got to allow God to do some changes. You got to allow him to do some furniture moves. You got to get out of the way. You got to stop talking about I did this, I did that, I, I, I. Baby, I ain't never got you nowhere. It was only the Lord Jesus Christ that brought you to where you are right now. It was only God that changed you to who you are right now. That Pharisee didn't understand. That the type of prayer he was praying was not right. You were you so busy bragging about I'm not like them. I don't do this. I don't do that. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is this. We've all made mistakes. Even us as preachers. Glory to God. We ain't always been saved. And we ain't always been preachers all our life. Some of us as preachers, we done done some stuff that we don't even want nobody to know about. And some of us as Christians, we've done some things in our past that we regret, that we don't want to talk about no more, that we don't want to relive no more. But at the end of the day, his blood, God's blood, washes away all of our sins. And that's one thing I love about God. He's a forgiving God. He's a just God. He's a holy God. He saying he loves me in spite of who I am. Oh, God knows all of us. That's why I love that song Tasha Cop does. He knows my name. In other words, he knows about me. He knew me when I was in my mother's womb. He knew, he knew everything there is to know about little old me. He knows it all. He knows I'm not perfect. He knows I'm going to make mistakes. He knows sometimes I'm going to go in the wrong direction. But that's what the Holy Spirit is there for, to lead and guide you in the way you need to go. We have nothing to boast about. We have nothing to say, oh, I'm this, I'm that. Oh, I went to school. I got me an education and I got a degree. It doesn't matter, baby. There's college degrees sleeping out on the street right now. There's some college degrees that are homeless right now. It was nobody but Jesus that helped you to get that degree that you have. It's nobody but Jesus that gave you the strength to sit up them late nights and study. It was nobody but him. Let's get back to our text. The, pub, the, the Pharisee was sitting there. He prayed this selfish prayer. And after that, it goes into the publican. And it said, the publican standing afar off would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me. I'm a sinner. Be merciful unto me, because I'm a sinner. That publican realized, the Lord, I made some mistakes in life. That publican realized, Lord, I'm not even worth it. To even call upon your name. But Father God, I'm right here praying right now. If you don't mind, let me use my sanctified imagination. I can see that publican with his head hanging down. Lord, I messed up. Lord, I, I, I've done wrong. Lord, I, I haven't always done everything you told me to do. Lord, I've gone in the wrong direction at times. And, and Lord, I, I, I'm messing up, but I'm, I'm trying to get myself together. I'm, I'm trying to get myself straight. I, I need you to help me. I need you to work on me. I need you to save me. I need you to deliver me. I need you to be merciful unto me. Because see, people don't understand <laughs> about those twins called grace and mercy. If it wasn't for those twins, grace and mercy, a lot of us would be in trouble right now. If it wasn't for those twins, grace and mercy, because when you understand grace and mercy, if grace and mercy is explained just like this, God does not allow you to get the things that you do deserve, but he gives you a lot of stuff that you don't deserve. Somebody didn't catch that, but you'll get it later on. You don't get everything that you do deserve, but you get some stuff that you don't deserve. In other words, the stuff that you do deserve, you didn't get it. You bypassed the sickness. You bypassed death. You bypassed that car crash. You bypassed the fact that you could have been broke, busted, and disgusted. You bypassed that. Why? Because of those twins, grace and mercy. Because of those twins, grace and mercy, God blessed you with a nice roof over your head. God blessed you with vehicles in 
your driveway. God blessed you with a nice job. God blessed you with a wonderful spouse. God blessed you with some good children because of those twins called grace and mercy. If it wasn't for grace and mercy, we'd be in trouble. But that publican said, Lord, I need you. That publican cried out, Lord, I need Savior. That publican wasn't like the Pharisees in there judging people before they even get in the building. That publican was not like that Pharisee putting down on folk because you don't dress like the rest of us dress. It don't matter whether your clothes came from Walmart or J.C. Penney's or it came from the high-end store. It doesn't matter. Thank God you got some clothes on your back. It doesn't matter whether you got Jordans on your feet or not. Thank God that you got shoes on your feet. You're not walking around here barefoot. Thank God that you got everything that you need because of him. As we read on, as I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exhausted. Exalted. In other words, what it's saying is if I'm lifting up myself, if I'm boasting, I'm saying I got this. If I'm saying I can do this, I did this, I did that. If I'm putting myself up here, eventually it says you're going to be brought down. Because we got to understand we all are not the best. We've all made mistakes. And we're going to keep making mistakes. Why? We're not perfect. But God loves us. God is a forgiving God. He's a just God. And because he's a just God, I thank him. Because I already know, if it had not been for the Lord on McNeil's side, child ain't no telling where I'd be right now. Ain't no telling what I'd be doing right now. But because of his grace, and his mercy, because he saved my soul over 20 years ago, I thank him that now I'm preaching the word of God. Now I'm teaching the word of God. I'm trying to help folk get to know this friend that I know. I'm trying to help folk understand that we need to know how to live clean and holy life. I'm trying to help folk understand we ain't got time to be talking about nobody else. We ain't got time to be putting nobody else down. We all trying to get to one place, and that's trying to get to heaven. And you can't get to heaven talking about me. You can't get to heaven talking about the next person. You can't get to heaven putting other folk down. The only way you're going to get to heaven, lifting people up, praising God, doing what God tells you to do. Help draw folk into him. Help people understand and learn who God is. Well, the clock on the wall says that's all. It's been fun, but Rem McNeil got to run. I thank all of you all for tuning in this morning. It's been fun, but I got to run. See you later, alligator, and after a while, crocodile. But I just want to leave this little word right here with you that you got to understand and know we all need to take a self-inventory and look back over our lives and see where God has brought us from. He brought us from sunshine and rain. He brought us through the heartache and pain. He brought us through the ups, and he brought us through the downs. He brought us through changes and turnaround. And if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, some of us would still be in trouble right now. Some of us would still be out there on the corner. Some of us would still be snorting cocaine. Some of us would still be alcoholic. Some of us would still be out there running up and down the highway doing stuff we shouldn't do. But because of those twins, grace and mercy, because God took time to reach down and pick us up, because God took time to save us, because he took time to clean us, because he took time to die on the cross for our sin, because he took time to make a way out of no way because he took time to love us in spite of who we are because he took time to say, you know what? I got need of you and he changed us. Because, glory be to God, he took time to do all of that. We're saved by grace. We're saved by his blood. We're just sinners saved by grace, y'all. You need to understand that you ain't always been where you are right now. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, ain't no telling where you would be right now. Take that self-inventory the next time before you start pointing at somebody else and trying to talk about them. Before you start pointing at somebody else trying to put them down. Church folks, y'all need to understand. People come in to get to know Christ, not to get put down. Because if they're misjudged, if they're talked about and put down, when they get in the house of God, they ain't going to stay there. They're going to go back the opposite way. And the blood will be required on our hands. Why? You can't. You need to understand this, and I'm going to get out of here. You need to understand this. You can't clean a fish before you catch it. Somebody's going to get that in a minute. You can't clean a fish before you catch it. you got to catch the fish first, then you clean it. God bless.
God bless y'all. Have a good day.